is the right environment for us to grow and to thrive. Once we have chosen that environment, then we also plant ourselves in that environment soil and continue to care for the garden of our being so that we can become fully connected to ourselves and to all of existence. Tubishvat reminds us of the power of nature's unique positivity. Hello, I'm Lucinda, and I'm so delighted to be with you today and to be here in our, our new spiritual community, Minyan Oned Shabbat. And thank you so much for hosting this. And I just have to do a, a, a welcome to our spiritual community here in the Keys. They're meeting at the Or Hayam Synagogue together and putting this Zoom screen up so that they can participate with us. So thank you. And welcome to my brother Ari and Moira and to our sister Everett and our good friends Tony and all of our friends and family who are coming from all over the country. We're so delighted to have you here. So each month I, um, I ask to come through me, I invite a poem to come through that really represents the energy, the Kabbalistic energy of each Hebrew month. Uh, as well as my own personal experience and the political events of the day. And I'd like to read you the poem that I wrote for, for this month, New Year of the Trees. Just when despair almost overtakes us, when bullets and bombs bind our muscles and constrict our bodies and bones, the new moon of Shvat appears inviting us to dig deep inside, to find that nugget of faith, witness it sprouting, to reimagine the future. In Shvat, we cross a threshold into a mysterious realm, hidden deep within ourselves and the deep interior of trees, a stirring, even in frigid winter, sap begins to rise, the new cycle begins. On the full moon of Shvat, we celebrate new year of the trees. Renewal of life on fertile earth awakens the divine flow of vital energy from above, streaming from the cosmic tree of life down from the roots in heaven to recreate the fragrant blooming world minute by minute. Can we return to the primal garden, repair our transgression, find redemption, savor sacred fruit, nourishing and sweet? In full view, we bless our holy apple to align ourselves with the source of all blessings, to flourish and thrive. Shvat is the month to reconstellate ourselves, discover secrets we never knew, delight in honeyed taste of heavenly bliss, where all people are faces of the one. So I'd like to create a kavana, an intention for our Seder tonight based on the Kabbalistic interpretation of the purpose of this gathering. Our intention is to draw down the flow of divine energy from the sacred tree of life from above and through our loving prayers, stories, music, and blessings of this holy fruit that is before us affect the growth and well-being of all trees that bring forth nourishment for our sustenance. And in this way, with our breath, we create a holy circle of giving and receiving, a reciprocity of love and sharing, drawing closer to the Holy One, as in the original Gan Eden. It is perfect 
You are loved, all is clear, and I am holy. It is perfect, you it are is loved. perfect. All is clear, and all is clear, and I am holy. You are loved. All is clear, and I am loved. Sing it with me. I am perfect. You are loved. All is clear, and I. As we enter each of the four worlds that we're going to experience tonight, this four world blessing will lead us in. Thank you, Reb Mark. So we enter the first world, the world of Asiya. It's the world of action, the world in which we assemble and shape artifacts without changing the form of God's raw material. It's the physical world represented by earth and the season of winter. In the world of Asiya, we drink white wine and eat fruits with hard outer shells and soft insides. The white wine symbolizes the sleep that descends upon nature when the sun's rays begin to weaken in the winter. In the winter, the earth is sometimes barren, covered with snow. Now, where we are right now in the Florida Keys, definitely not a blanket of snow. But I know some of you are living where there is quite a blanket of snow. In the winter, when we live in the north, we layer ourselves in clothing, blanketing ourselves from the cold, just as the earth covered with snow insulates itself. So the fruit we eat, in the first world also symbolizes the winter season with its protected outside. Removing the hard shells exposes a fleshy, vulnerable inside. The shell that conceals also protects. Like in the world of work, kind of what we think of as the regular world, everyday activity. Sometimes our spiritual essence requires the protection and nurturing of a shell. And a special effort is necessary to protect it from indifference, from being forgotten and from unkind influences. In the first world, we crack the shells of the nuts and fruits and release the divine sparks for tikkun olam, for healing of the world. And as we do that, we crack the shells of our own preoccupations and our own pains. Adama v'shamayim Chom ha'eish tzil ha'mayim Ani margish zot begufi Beruchi uvishmati Together! Adama Adama the Shamayim, the Shamayim, Chom Ha'esh, Chom Ha'esh, Tzil Ha'mayim, Tzil Ha'nir Magisot Begufi, Beruchi Ve'unishmati, Heya, 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 Ho, Heya, 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 Ho, Even through it in our body, in our spirit and in our souls love of earth love of earth love of sky love, love of sky of heat of fire heat of fire. fire sound of water sound, sound of, of water. water i can feel it in my body i can feel it in my soul let's shake it up hey ya 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 ho hey ya 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 ho i can feel it in my body 
I can feel it in my soul. One more time, Mark and Hillary. Love of earth, love of earth, heat of sky, love of sky, heat of fire, heat of fire, sound of water, sound of water. I can feel it in my body. I can feel it in my soul. Hey, ya, 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 ho. Hey, ya, hey, ya, hey, ya, hey, ya, hey, hey, ya, hey, ya, ho. I can feel it in my body. I can feel it in my soul. So in this world of a CR, I can't help but um, think about the miracles of nature. You know, very young in life, um, it came to me that that my life was going to be about farming, about growing food, about connecting with the earth in the most elemental way. You know, the most important connection we have as as a human species to the earth is in the food we eat. We are made of those substances. And when I was first farming as a very young man, I was absolutely flabbergasted by the miracle of photosynthesis, that plant leaves have the ability to take the sun's energy directly and the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and combine it with nutrients and water from the soil and create everything we need to live on this planet. Literally everything is created by this miracle of photosynthesis initially. And um, when I think about the new year of the trees, when I think about this celebration of Tubishvat, what more important to celebrate than the trees, which are such miracles on this earth that, that create what create the, uh, all of the carbohydrate we need and the trees breathing out the oxygen that we need to breathe in as we breathe out the carbon dioxide that they need to breathe in. Such an important symbiosis on this earth that we live with, ourselves and trees. A true miracle. So uh, I'm just so grateful that in our tradition, we have this holiday to celebrate, that this acknowledgement of this miracle that we are celebrating tonight. So let's become the tree of life that each one of us uniquely is. The Kabbalists believe that each one of us really represents that archetypal symbolic tree. So we're going to become that tree by either sitting closely at the corner of your chair with your feet flat on the ground, or like I'm going to do, I'm going to stand up and place my feet firmly on the ground, shoulder width apart. And I'm going to, at the bottom of my feet, grow roots out of the bottom of the feet, going down, down, down into the earth, six inches, six feet down, down into this fertile earth. Now with your breath, draw that fertile energy, your breath up through the earth, the bottom of your feet, your ankles, your calves, your knees, your thighs, your hips, up this beautiful trunk of your tree, up through your throat, through the crown chakra. And now release that energy down through this beautiful trunk of your tree, feeling it go down the trunk, down your calves, your, your thighs, your knees, your calves, and again, down into the earth, through your roots. And one more time, bring that earth energy up through your roots, through the earth, through the fecund fertile earth, through the bottom of your feet, your ankles, your calves, your knees, your thighs, your hips, up through this wondrous trunk of your tree, up through your throat, your nose, your third eye, your crown chakra. Now raise your branches and feel your branches reaching up, up, up to the bottom of the 
tree of life that's sending its roots down to you and you're feeling that energy coming down through your arms, through your shoulders, down back through your trunk, down through that beautiful trunk, through your thighs, your calves, your knees, down into the earth again, rooted, firm, grounded, centered, present. So, uh, I don't know about you, but you know, my, my favorite part of a Seder is always the eating. <laughs> and so we, we get to that moment in our Tu Bishvat Seder where we get to sample the fruits of Asiya, of the first world. So uh, some of the fruits in this world, these are fruits that have an inedible exterior and an edible interior. Mm -hmm. Now, some of you, you know, like in Israel, they think of the the pomegranate as, as one of those fruits. So some of you may have a pomegranate. Uh, definitely nuts, different kinds of nuts. Now, where I am, I figured the fruit with the most inedible skin got to be this coconut. And so, the most delicious inside. Yes. Yeah, the coconut. <laughs> I got a coconut too. <laughs> All right. Um, so... Whatever, yes, whatever fruits you have there in front of you, and hopefully you each have some kind of a first world Seder plate. As we eat the fruit of Asiya, the physical world of action, may we be blessed with the courage to reveal ourselves, to be vulnerable, to grow, to repair, and to help heal. So we say the blessing, Baruch Ata Aronai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Borei Pri Ha'etz. And we sample our fruits. And just as in the Passover Seder, we drink four cups of wine tonight. With each cup changing color, to correspond to the changing season and the changing worlds. In a moment, I'm going to ask our holy friend, Mark Cronish, to bless us with a kiddush. As we drink this first cup of wine, a white wine, may we feel the sleep of the winter as it refuels our body and soul and prepares for the lengthening of the days and the rebirth of nature. So Mark, if you could unmute and yes. let us with the Kiddush. The fruit of the vine is a symbol of the life force that sustains us. And we drink this first cup in the world of Asiya. And yud Hey vav Hey has provided us with a bridge from this finite material world to the infinite Ain Sof, using the four letters of the divine name, yud Hey vav Hey, We drink this first cup in Asiya, where the Shekhinah dwells. It is the home of the first level of the soul, our Nefesh. The bottom Hey is in Malchut, as we chant the blessing, visualize the letter Hey. Baruch Atadonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Peri Amen. Amen. It is perfect, you are loved, all is clear, and I am holy. It, it is, is perfect, perfect, 
You are love. All is clear. And I am holy. And I am holy. Perfect. You are love. All is clear. And I am clear. And I am perfect. You are love. All is clear, and I am holy. Thank you, Mark, and thank you, Reb Mark. So with that chant, we now enter into the second world, the world of Yetzirah. It's the most vulnerable of the four worlds, the world of formation. It's the world in which we cause a transformation of raw materials, such as making bricks or even pottery bowls out of clay. We acknowledge God as creator, not only of the physical world, but also of our ability to be creative, our capacity to feel, speak, and sing. It's the emotional world represented by water and the season of spring. In the world of Yetzirah, we drink white wine with a dash of red and eat fruits with soft outsides and hard inner cores, like a hard pit. The white wine with a little dash of red in it symbolizes the gradual deepening of color, which parallels reawakening of the colors in nature as spring starts to arrive. In spring, the earth starts to thaw and the first colors of flower appear on the hillsides. In the full warmth of spring, we go outdoors to be with nature. No longer coating ourselves in protective attire, we expose our soft bodies to the sun. We eat fruit containing pits and we are reminded that despite the wondrous expressions of our spirit, we are still tied to the hard pit of our ego. We're still concealed deep inside, protecting our divine sparks even from within. So in the world of Yetzirah, we're invited to celebrate the emotions of, of joy and happiness, but it's also the world that we feel most deeply our loss and our grief. So one of the most moving experiences I've had in the last few years was connected directly to the tree of life that was an integral part of my life. I looked at it every morning and night when I looked out the window in my home in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and Squirrel Hill. We lived directly across the street from the tree of life synagogue in Pittsburgh. Well, on October 27th, 2018, I was in an all day seminar and I turned off my phone and during lunchtime, I, I looked at my phone and I saw that there were three telephone calls from my brother Ari, which was very unusual. And I looked at the phone, I turned it on and he said, Lucinda, Lu Lucinda, turn on the TV. There's been a terrible massacre at Tree of Life Synagogue. Turn on the TV. There's helicopters flying over the house, looking down at the buildings at our house. As the story unfolded, I learned that 11 people had been murdered and six people wounded during the Shabbat service, standing and praying, including several Holocaust survivors and people who were parents and friends of the people who I grew up with. It was the deadliest, most horrific attack on any Jewish community in this country. I was shaken to the core. And after I sat with this horror for some time, I, I just I just looked up and I asked, like, what what can I do? What what can I do? And I I I saw I saw, I heard, I felt what whatever it was, I got some kind of guidance from an energy that that was a, a Reb Zalman guidance energy coming to me that said, stay up all night and light a candle and say the Psalms out loud 
and, and guide the souls of these annihilated Jews to the one. And I called my friends, my spiritual community, my Rosh Kodesh circle, many of you, my family, and shared with them this guidance that I had received. That's what I could do. It was the only thing I could do. I could imagine doing at that moment. And that's what I did. And I later realized that there were others who were also called to respond. We wanted to share with everybody tonight a song that Eric and I wrote the Sunday after the tragedy in Pittsburgh, a crime of hatred, a terrible anti-Semitic nightmare. And we woke up that next morning and as musicians, you know, we don't know what to do and I don't get it. I don't get why this is all happening and I don't know, but I knew that I wanted to do something. So Eric and I woke up and wrote a song. And so we wanted to sing this tonight. Um, it's an offering of love. It goes out to anyone who's ever been subjected to hate or any kind of a tragedy like this. And there's so much hate in this world. And um, the only way that we know how to do anything is to, is to try to put music out and to try to heal that with love and music. This song is called Tree of Life. And um, it is for all of us and for you. So this world of Yetzirah, the world of emotion, it can go deep. It can go deep in many directions. Yetzirah is also considered the world of community, the world of building community. So I wanted to tell just a story. It kind of goes in a different direction than the one you just heard. It's a story about a banana tree. Um, I got to know bananas well. My friend, my friend Anthony knows this too, you know, we, we both spent a year in Israel and we spent a lot of time picking bananas on kibbutz back there in the, in the uh, 1969, 1970 years. So I love bananas. I love banana trees. So about three years ago, I decided, heck, let me plant a banana tree 
here where we are in the Florida Keys. I don't know if it'll grow or not. So we planted it. And when we got here last year for winter, just around this time last year, there was a huge stock of bananas on this tree. So when they were ripe, of course, we harvested them. Um, what, there we go. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm hoping you can see this picture of uh, the two of us harvesting this stock of bananas. There we go. <laughs> well, believe it or not, there's 84 bananas on that one stock. So what the hell you do with 84 bananas at the same time? They're all going to ripen at the same time. Well, we love bananas, but not that much. So we decided that we would host a banana split party. And when all those bananas became ripe, we invited all of our neighbors and friends in this community over. And we said, bring your favorite ice cream or, you know, frozen soy dessert or sorbet and whatever toppings you like, and we'll provide the bananas. And everybody showed up. We had dozens of people come by on that Sunday afternoon. And we were building community from that banana tree. What a great message this to Bishvat about how we can build community with trees. And another way we can build community is through dialogue and through talking to each other. And so we're gonna have a brief five minute opportunity for a breakthrough room uh, with one other person, Each pe uh, there'll be dyads in the room. And we're gonna invite you into the room very shortly with the question for yourself and your partner, what has been your relationship with trees? Is there a special place of trees or a forest that has had special meaning in your life? So we're going to invite you in. You're going to speak for five minutes. And the person who has the coldest temperature outside their house is going to go first. So, so it's five minutes. That means a couple of minutes for each person. So make sure that both of you have a chance to talk about what has been your a special relationship that you've had with trees. And if there's a special place of trees or a forest that has a special meaning in your life. Um, if, if I may add about going to these these breakthrough rooms, if you are if you have your uh, video off, you're going to be in a breakthrough room by yourself. If you would like to be in a breakthrough room with somebody else, please turn your video on now, um, and that's the only way you'll get there. And the other thing is, it, many of you are here with um, two people in your square already. And uh, Lucinda, do you want me to put people with two people in a room or shall we put them with a third person so that yeah. they can have other people that they don't already know to speak with? Yeah, let's put them with a third person. Yeah. Okay, we're, that is what I'm intending. Really, we're really you. running fine on time so we can extend the, the room. Okay, so um, if there's two of you, you should have a third person in your room. And now I just need a moment because now we've mixed it up a little with new videos on and off and whatnot. So give me a moment to arrange this. Uh, take a minute or two to talk more if you wish, listen to <laughs> and all. Well, I think we, we should take, I, I think we should take a minute or two to like have a sip of wine and taste some of our wonderful fruits. So we'll do them, we can do them. And I can sing part of one of the only songs about trees that I know from the Broadway musical Paint Your Wagon. I talk to the trees, but they never listen to me. Uh, Reb Nachman of Bratislav would never have written those lyrics. I talk to the stars, but they never hear me. And that's all the words I know, unless somebody here knows more. So have a good time when you head to your breakthrough room with someone you might adore. Are we ready now, Renee? Save me from uh, myself. No, give, give me, uh, you know, this this gets much more complicated very quickly once we have the things going on. So just give me a moment. Okay, I think I got it. Hold on okay. just a minute. Well, it gives me a chance to uh, welcome everybody again, both uh, Moshniks, um, who are 
people who participate in Minyan Odin of Shabbat, as far as I know, the world's only Zoom a God, um, and all of you coming from friends of Lucinda and Oren's, for sure. Um, I just want you all to know that um, after the Seder is over, you'll be getting an email from me um, inviting you to join the mailing list uh, for, for Moshe um, if you'd like to come visit and see what we're doing sometimes. I'm, I wanted to do that instead of putting you automatically on the mailing list because um, I just don't think that's right. So you can opt in. Um, to the mailing list by, by going to the link that I put in that email that you'll get shortly after, um, after we're done. Renee, how are we doing? Uh, we are um, doing uh, well, I, th I think. So this is a little experimental. Um, everybody's going to be whisked off to a room. You should have one other Zoom square. It may have multiple people in it. Um, but make sure everybody has a chance to speak and be listened to. Mark, are there any other directions you want to give? I think that's it. Okay. So we're going to give people 10 minutes then. 10 minutes. Okay. Very well. There's no business like tree business. There's no business I know. Everything about it is in blooming. <laughs> Consult. <laughs> oh, uh, ah, wow, it go. all worked. Woohoo. All right. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, and we're, now we're, somebody we're either back. came in after the rooms. Ah, no. Jonathan did not well, go to the room. Maybe, or, well, maybe he at did. least his name wasn't Mark Novak. Oh, he, he left. So how many people did we have? Because we couldn't see anybody in the, you know, I'd love to know who was there, actually. Oh, um, we can send you a list I, we, afterwards. Yeah, we'll can... have the list. So there were a total of uh, 30, 31 rooms. I think there were a little few more after at the height. Well, if there are 31 rooms, there were a lot more than 31 people then. Yeah, yeah. about 40 people. Yes. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. and 40 is a good number in Jewish. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and let's see, what was I going to say? Oh, and let's see, the person that was popped into here just left completely, but um, he was with Mark and Hillary, so I assume they'll talk to each other. Okay, we're, we're going to get up for a minute. Okay. 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 And uh, we're, we're timing this. It is 17 past the hour now. Uh, what time do you want to come back? Let, let's come back at... Um, 27 uh, past the hour, maybe. 26? 26, yeah, that because it really was, it was 816 when I opened the rooms, I think. Okay, let's okay. come back at 25. 25, 825. Okay. You got it. Because it would be perfectly on schedule according to our time schedule that way. Excellent. Okay. Um, great. Thank you. Seems to be going okay. It's hard for us to tell because we, we can't see a lot of, we can't see reactions of people. Everybody's engaged. Yeah. 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 Next time we'll help you get set up so you can see the people. <laughs> it is. It's much more, it's much more fun when you can see their faces. <laughs> okay, I should get up. Mark, did you try that white grape juice? There was something wrong with it, I think. It was terrible. <laughs> I think it was a dark color because it had. That's the way it always tastes. <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's the different color. No, it's really not. I think it had. I I really think that it's unusual because it's usually a very pale color, and this is dark brown. So I oh, damn. Okay. All right. See you in a bit. Twenty ten eight twenty five right. When, when you, if, I don't know if it's going to happen anymore, but when you are screen sharing something, if you just pause after you finish singing or playing music and leave the screen share up, then I can D, then I can take you away before you, it's just, you don't have to pop in and then I take you away, which just looks funny. Okay. Thank you. Bye. I'll go join Mark and Hillary since they got there alone. Oh, nope. Oh, your yeah, Dana was... Hello. Are you there, Yardena? Nope. 
she just left the meeting. She doesn't know what she's missing. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. I guess I should stay here in case anybody pops out of their room. Or are you gonna are you gonna still be here? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I'll go join Mark and Hillary then. Okay. Oh, you, you can do me a favor. What's that? Oh, hold on a second. Maybe I already know this. Maybe. Oh, what the heck? Yeah, when um, uh, later on, uh, Oren's going to talk about um, uh, Tzedakah. Mm -hmm. And so you can put this in when, um, as well as this is the, hold on a second. One is going to be for Moshe, and the other one okay. is for the Fair Food Network. And Oren will mention okay. something about that. So I've got them both in there now. You see them? Yeah. So if you would put those in, that would make that would be great. Thanks. Okay. All right. And now I'm going to go now that you're here. Okay. Oren, I'm looking forward to drinking my scotch. Oh, thank you for the reminder. I'm going to go get mine. Yeah. Okay. I just gave people a three minute warning. Okay. You know, while you're here, you should go back up to this thing because it's okay. Close in the rooms, they'll have sixty seconds. Are you going to ask uh, people to share or no? No, no. Okay. Hi, Mary Rita. You don't have to unmute.
it's nice if I'm looking at this. Mm -hmm. So Mark, you can let me know when everybody's back. Okay, where's Carol? <laughs> I was trying to show Carol this picture of, of a tree <laughs> of a tree from Dumbarton Oaks. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, we are all back. Okay, welcome back. I hope you uh, enjoyed your conversations about relationship with trees. And we're gonna continue that relationship by blessing the fruits of the second world, the world of Yetzirah. These are fruits with, um, well, they're supposed to be fruits with edible exteriors and a hard pit in the interior, like uh, um, dates, olives, apricots, peaches, and so forth. Um, we eat the fruit of Yetzirah, the emotional world of formation, so our hearts can be open to the feelings and needs of ourselves and others, allowing the warmth of our care through the world. You know, I, I, I put this mango on my plate, but I wasn't quite sure what to do with it because it certainly has an edible part and a hard pit in the middle, but it's also got a hard exterior. So this mango, it's like it's like a transformational fruit that bridges the worlds. <laughs> so we can say the uh, blessing over the fruit and taste our fruits of the second world. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam porei pri haetz. Blessed are you, yud he vav he, source of all life, who creates the fruit of the tree. And let me again uh, uh we're going to bless the wine, and Mark, in a, in a moment, I'll ask you to do that as we drink this second cup of wine, which is white with just a dash of red in it. Kind of looks like a weird rosé. May we, like the flowers, blossom into our full potential. And Mark Cronish, bless us with the Kiddush once again. Well, as the sap is rising in the tree, the energy is rising in us. And it's up to our heart space to ferret. So this second cup in Yetzirah is the home of our Ruach. And we focus on the Hebrew letter Vav as we make the blessing. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Bore Biri Hagafen. Blessed are you, Yud He Vav He, source of all life, who creates the fruit of the vine. Amen. 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 Thank you. And now, just before we transition into the third world, Something I want to mention, and you, you may remember this as I do from, from childhood, that Tu B'Shvat is traditionally a holiday where we are very charitable. We think about tzedakah, about how we can use our resources, those of us that have resources, to assist others in the work of tikkun olam. Um, sometimes it was giving money to... Uh, to plant trees in Israel, I recall as a kid, and other kinds. Well, um, I know at Pardes Chana every year when we do our Tuba Shvat Seder in Ann Arbor, we collectively think about where we can take some uh, money from our Pardes Chana treasury to donate to a cause that's connected somehow with, with Tuba Shvat. So I just want to uh, put that out there and then make, make a suggestion that if anybody is so moved to um, to be charitably minded today or tomorrow for Tu B'Shvat, I have two suggestions. One would be that you could make a donation to Mosh, to Minyan Oge Oneg Shabbat, that's hosting this Tu B'Shvat Seder. And a second is you could make a donation to a, an organization near and dear to my heart called Fair Food Network. 
which is an organization that is focused on food justice, on making sure that everybody has access to the uh, food, especially the fruits and vegetables, those, uh, those things from the trees that they need in this life. So uh, Mark, is it in the, in the chat room that they can find? Yes, yeah, so in, in the chat. So in the chat, you can find links to donate to Mosh and Fair Food Network if you are so moved on this tubish buy. It is perfect. You are loved. All is clear, and I am holy. Each of these sentences representing one of the four worlds from on top and on down, it is perfect. Yud, hey, vav, hey. So please join me and let's sing together. It is perfect, you are loved. All is clear, it is I am it holy. is perfect, you are perfect, you all is are clear love. and I all am is clear holy. and I am holy. Thank you, Reb Zalman. Mm. And now, friends, we end the, enter the world of Bria, the world of intellect, of thought. Bria, uh, the third world, is the world of creation. It's the world of thought, represented by air and the season of summer. In the world of Bria, we drink red wine with a dash of white, reminding us that as the land becomes warmer, and the colors of the fruits deepen as they ripen, too, we become warmer and more open. As human beings struggling in a world which often seems antagonistic to our integrity, we can develop hard shells to protect our inner core, like the fruit of the first world. And although we survive as individuals within our shells, we remain partly hidden and cut off from each other. And touching one another takes the patient effort of separating the protective layer from the inner core while keeping the core intact. We can also be more like the fruit of the second world, available up to a point, but withholding our innermost part, perhaps needing a, a secret toughness to keep from collapsing under the pressure. So in this, in this world of thought, focused on intellect, um, I wanted to share uh, some information that I just found. I mean, I've, I've known it for a long time, but when I looked at the actual numbers, I found it astounding. So um, Mark's gonna help me take a look at, at three different three different charts so let me explain what you're looking at here the green chart is showing the kilograms of greenhouse gas emissions per kilogram of food basically the amount of bad stuff going into the air causing climate change per weight of food and it's hard for you to see across the bottom but i can tell you that on the left it's beef so per kilogram of beef produced 70.6 kilograms of greenhouse gas going into the atmosphere. And then we have, there we go, lamb, shellfish, cheese. But what I want you to pay attention to, go all the way to the right, look at fruits and nuts, right? What a miracle that trees are doing for us. Per weight of food, fruits and nuts from the trees are producing a minuscule amount of greenhouse gas compared to many of the other foods that we consume. And that's per kilogram of, of just food, basically just by weight. 
if we look at the blue chart, Mark, and now let's look at it, uh, greenhouse gas emissions per kilogram of, per 100 grams of protein, right? So whether you look at it as pounds of food or pounds of actual protein produced, again, way on the left side is beef, 35 and a half kilograms of greenhouse gas emissions per 100 grams of protein. And once again, you know, one one hundredth of that if you're eating nuts for protein, if you're, if you're looking at 100 grams of protein from nuts. So again, trees are such miraculous beings for us on this planet, giving us sustenance, giving us food while protecting our planet from the disasters of climate change and the crisis of global warming. And then one other way to look at it with the orange chart, if we look at it as kilograms of greenhouse gas and uh, a kilocalorie is what we normally think of as a calorie. You know, if, if you have a, if you have a, if you're eating a food that says, oh, a serving is a hundred calories, it's actually 100 kilocalories. So per 1000 calories, it's showing you the kilograms of greenhouse gas that's produced. And once again, you know, much of what we think of as, as staple foods on the left, but once again, look what uh, fruits and nuts, especially nuts are doing for us. You know, per calorie of food, hardly any greenhouse gas emission from nuts. So it's just a another way of us um, honoring the trees on this two big pot and thanking them for the service they provide us and for this planet that we're living on with them. And so now I'd like you to turn to the Seder plate where I hope you have placed at least two raisins as we suggested, because we're going to do a little, a little raisin meditation. So with one of the raisins that you have, please just feel it in your hand and look at it and just put it in your mouth and taste it and eat it. And savor the taste. And with the other one, just keep it holding in your hand while I just, I just move us through this meditation where I'm inviting you to just relax and maybe close your eyes if you care to or avert your eyes or just, just relax. In a fertile vineyard in the Central Valley of California many years ago, a grapevine was lovingly planted by the hands of a farm worker family. Over the years, the same family took the responsibility to prune, water, and fertilize the vineyard and this particular vine. The sun set its energy down to help grow the green leaves that would eventually feed sugars to the fruit. Nutrients in the soil, carefully tilled, were carried to the leaves from the roots in the earth. Earth, sky, water sustained this vine over many years. The vine was created by talented geneticists to make sure that the stems grafted onto the rootstock was exactly the right DNA. So this vine would thrive in the hot dry summers and cold winters of the Central Valley. The soil ecosystem, some of, it, some of it beyond our understanding, supported the life of the vine and its fruit. And for centuries before European settlers even came to farm this area, the soils were taken care of by the Yokut people, also known as the Mariposans. This particular vine bore heavy clusters of plump grapes. In the fall, after the vine had been lovingly tended all season, migrant workers from Mexico who travel up and down our country to work the fields, harvested the grape clusters, transported them to a drying shed, spread out and dried the grapes into plump, sweet, raisins and boxed them up to be delivered to supermarket warehouses. From there, workers in the warehouse sent a particular pallet of raisins onto trucks 
driven by hardworking truckers to the store where you or someone who shops for you bought it and brought it to your kitchen. There are, <laughs> now take this raisin and place it underneath your tongue or on your tongue and feel and taste the texture. There are hundreds, if not thousands of people whose labor created the simple occasion of this food arriving here in your mouth in this moment. Take this moment to consider how hard they work to support themselves and bring you this nourishment. And think about all the sunlight, water, and soil life that went into creating this raisin that you are tasting right now in your mouth. Roll this raisin around in your mouth and see, much, so, see how much of its history you can experience as you eat it. And the raisin is just one of the fruits that we bless and eat in this third world of Bria. In Bria, we eat entirely edible fruits, figs, grapes, apples, pears, the raisins we just had. And as we eat the fruit of Bria, the world of thought and creation, may our thoughts and actions be integrated. May we create harmony in our lives and in the world. Baruch Ata Aronai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Pri HaEitz. Blessed are you, Yud Hei Vav Hei, source of all life, who creates the fruit of the tree. And now our third cup of wine, which is red with just a dash of white in it. May we cherish the warmth of the season of abundance of our harvesting. And Mark, please once again, honor us with a Kiddush blessing on this third cup of wine. So on this third cup, we focus on the upper hay. This is the home of a higher level of our soul, our neshama. Yeah. Now our energy has risen to the third eye of our inner vision, which is equivalent in our tradition to hachma bina, wisdom and understanding. So visualize the upper hay as we make the blessing for the sustenance of the fruit of the vine. Baruch Atadonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Peri HaGafen. Blessed are you, God, Yud Hei Vav Hei, source of all life, who creates the fruit of the vine. Amen. 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 It is perfect. You are loved. All is clear and I am holy. It, it is perfect. Is perfect. You are is perfect. All it is clear, perfect. and all I is clear, holy. and I it am is holy. You are perfect. All I is clear, holy. and I am holy. And now we enter the world of Atsilut, the world of, world of spirit and emanation. 
It's the world, purely spiritual world represented by fire. In the autumn world of Atsilut, we drink deep red wine and eat no fruit, for this world cannot be re represented by any fruit. The pure red wine represents the full bloom of nature before the cold winter. As nature expends its last bit of energy, a full cycle is completed. As we have passed through each world, we have changed with each season. We began by protecting our soft inner self and slowly healing our hard outer layer. And within the soft layer, another hardness was found, protected by the softness which surrounded it. We came to a place where there was no distinction between the protected and the protective. In the world of Atsilut, we come aware of God's grace, mercy, love, wisdom. These are realities that are perceived with our hearts, not with our senses. Our hearts are full and we praise the source which renews all creation. And now I'd like to call on Elena Ellen Passman for this reading about Reb Nachman. I'm not sure Alana is here, ah. Lucen. Okay. Well, then I'll read it. Would you like to read it? Sure. So uh, a, a story of Reb Nachman. Reb Nachman of Bratslav was once traveling with his Hasidim by carriage. And as it grew dark, they came to an inn where they spent the night. During the night, Reb Nachman began to cry out loudly in his sleep, waking everybody at the inn, all of whom came running to see what had happened. When he awoke, the first thing Reb Nachman did was to take out a book he had brought with him. Then he closed his eyes and opened the book and pointed to a passage. And there was written, cutting down a tree before its time is like killing a soul. Then Reb Nachman asked the innkeeper if the walls of that inn had been built out of saplings cut down before their time. The innkeeper admitted that that was true, but how did the rabbi know? Reb Nachman said, all night I dreamed I was surrounded by the bodies of those who had been murdered. I was very frightened. Now I know it was the souls of the trees that cried out to me. Hmm. And so, my friends, for our final meditation, just place your feet firmly upon the earth. Ground yourself with your powerful roots that dig deeply into the fertile earth beneath your feet. And just gently avert your eyes if you're comfortable with that. Breathe in and breathe out gracefully. Gradually entering into this hidden and mystical time of new beginnings and rebirth. Feel this new life beginning to take root within you. Envision a network of roots supporting you as you ground deep into the earth. Your own roots, roots of others who surround you with their love, roots of your family, your ancestors, your community, roots of your values, beliefs, and hopes. Envision them carving through the dark earth, bringing sustenance straight to you, your bones, your muscles, your organs, your heart, lungs, 
nervous system, every part of your being. Allow yourself to release anything you want to shed, any darkness that is blocking new growth. Just breathe out the collective and personal traumas of this past. Release down to the receptive soil that will transform them into nourishment for new growth. Breathe in the pure air that the oak, the maple, the birch, the cedar, the palm, the banana, breathe out. Release your breath of life down to the earth, allowing the trees around you to take in that life-enhancing energy co-creating life on earth with your very breath. Is there a thought, an idea, a vision that wants to come to life from the hidden seeds of wisdom and potential buried within you? Allow yourself to receive inspiration from above, below, all around open to the receiving. Allow the tender seeds of possibilities to be planted so they may be nourished, sprout new possibilities, and blossom forth in the coming years. Taste the joy, sweetness, and nourishment that will come forth from your blossoming, bringing such bright, juicy fruit. Feel the warmth of this inner knowing spread throughout your body, filling you with satisfaction. Uh, and from from this from this place of. Uh, residing in the world of spirit rather than blessing any food we take in a different kind of sense so if you have you have something that might smell nice what i have here is some cinnamon you might have clove some other scent and we could do a blessing for a beautiful scent that we'll take in Blessed are you, Yudhe Vavhe, creator of spices, Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Izvei Bisamim. And there is a, um, there's another tradition that we can smell and taste the spiritual essence of scotch, of bourbon, of some beautiful beverage. And um, Mark Cronus, do you have a uh, final yes. Kiddush for the glass of pure red? For the fourth and final cup, this is the world of Atsilut, the spiritual world of emanation. We get in touch with our soul's journey back to its source. We think of pure light. We're on a journey to the Ain Sof, the infinite oneness of pure consciousness. So as we bless, bless this last cup, let's focus on the crown of the Yud. 
Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Borei Piri Hagafin Blessed are you, God, Yud Hei Vav Hei, source of all life who creates the fruit of the vine. Amen. <laughs> so that, that concludes our portion of this Tu Bishvat Seder. And um, want to once again thank Mosh, thank Reb Mark and your community for inviting us to participate and to, to uh, celebrate this evening with you all. And uh, just so lovely to be here in this virtual room with uh, family and friends this evening. Let's give a most round of applause for <laughs> Lucinda and Arne. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a song, of course. The only other song about tree that I actually know some of the words. And Arn Lucinda gave me the go ahead for this because it makes sense and it make me in the mood for a banana split. Day, day, oh, day, oh, why day, oh, everybody now. Daylight coming and we want to go home. Day is a day, is a day, is a day, oh. Daylight coming and we want to go home. Hey, come, Mr. Tallyman, Tally be banana. Daylight coming and we want to go home. Come, Mr. Tallyman, Tally me banana. Daylight coming and we want to go home. Day, oh, oh's a day, oh. Daylight coming and we want to go home. Day is a day is a day, oh. Daylight coming and me wanna go home. Lift six foot, seven foot, eight foot, boom! Daylight coming and me wanna go home. Oh, we're six foot, seven foot, eight foot, punch. Daylight coming and we wanna go home. Day oh, who's a day oh? Daylight coming and me wanna go home. Day oh, who's a day oh? Daylight coming and me wanna go home. Hey, come, Mr. Tally Man, tally me banana. A big bunch of bananas like Lucinda's and orange. Daylight coming and me wanna go home. Come, Mr. Tally Man, tally me banana. Daylight coming and me wanna go home. Is a day oh, is a day oh. Daylight coming and me wanna go home. Day is a day is a day, oh. Daylight coming and me wanna go home. Daylight coming and me wanna go home. Daylight coming and me wanna go. Everybody, daylight coming and me wanna go home. Daylight coming and there's the banana right there, the star of our show. Daylight coming and me wanna go. Ho, oh, oh, the day. Hey, there's a bunch of bananas. Ari has some. Anybody else have any bananas? Go get your bananas. <laughs> it's the banana parade. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you have to come back to Mosh on shop this morning. <laughs>